If you've been to the ocean, you know the wind blows like a lot. So why not harness some of the wind to make electricity? The federal government thinks that's a great idea. In fact, they've picked two areas off the coast of southern Oregon where they think a couple of big wind farms should be built way out there in the water. Sounds like a cool idea, right? Well, not to everyone. Environmental reporter Cale Williams has our story. Sometime in the not too distant future, the ocean off the southern Oregon coast could be the state's newest power plant. And we got one step closer last week when the Federal Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, also known as BOEM, announced two draft wind energy areas, one off the coast of Brookings and another to the north near Coos Bay. Um, Diane Brandt, Oregon well, director with the nonprofit wind, Renewable you know, Northwest, renewable said resources. offshore wind in Oregon could provide an important way to supplement Oregon's other renewables, like land-based wind, hydro, and solar. It's another diverse resource that we have to be able to add to our clean electricity grid. As Oregon works toward a goal of 100% renewable electricity by 2040, the state will become increasingly reliant on wind, solar, and hydro. But those kinds of renewables aren't always consistent. The wind off the southern Oregon coast, thought to be some of the best in the country for generating power, could fill in some of those gaps. Is blowing at times opposite or complementary to onshore wind. And so it just is another resource to give us um, a variety of attributes and, and resources on our grid to make sure that we're getting the electricity when we need it. That's part but of not everyone saw the recent uh, announcement as a step forward. They're not listening to coastal communities. They're not listening to the fishing industry. They're not listening to congressional representatives. That's Heather Mann, um, executive Fishing director of the Midwater Council. Trawlers Cooperative, based in Newport. The 32 boats she represents all fish in the areas where this offshore wind farm would go. And they're all worried about what constructing and operating hundreds of floating wind turbines would mean for their livelihoods. If you fish with a trawl bet, you won't be able to be in there. Long line, you won't be able to be in there. Man also has concerns about potential unintended consequences of a relatively new technology being put in an environmentally sensitive area. When the dams were put in, everybody thought that was great. You know, renewable energy, inexpensive, and we have those things. But we also put salmon on the brink of extinction, and that was an unintended consequence of that renewable energy. And she isn't the only one with concerns. Earlier this week, the Confederated Tribes of Coos, Lower Umpqua, and Suislaw Indians released a statement questioning the process. The tribe supports any green economic development project that follows the law and does not harm local fishing jobs, our environment, or tribal cultural resources. We cannot support offshore wind development until we are provided assurance that it will do good and not harm the tribe, its members, and the greater community. In June, Governor Kotek sent a letter to Bohm asking the agency to pause development of offshore wind in Oregon so the concerns of people like Mann and the tribes could be addressed. Bohm didn't exactly pause the process, but they did extend the comment period on the new areas from 30 to 60 days, and they plan to hold several meetings in coastal communities to hear from the people who would be most impacted. For Mann, Having a meeting and having her concerns recognized are two very different things. Balm will hold as many meetings as you want. And there's good people that work at Balm. You say, can, can we hold a meeting? Can you talk on the phone? Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's a one-way relationship. It's not authentic engagement. Man hopes the federal government will take a step back and reconsider where they want to put the wind farms. But she also recognizes that development off the Oregon coast is part of a larger push for offshore wind. The Biden administration has set a goal of 30 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030. And Oregon's wind farms, if built, could provide up to 2.6 of those gigawatts. Man, she thinks that Bohm has put approving the project above the concerns of her community. At the end of the day, what Bohm is interested in is leasing the land, getting that auction going so that they can check a box for... Um, the administration's goals of 20 uh, by 2030, having 30 gigawatts of offshore wind energy in place. Man has also heard from some people who suggest that any fishing jobs that are lost to wind power could easily be replaced by the green economy. And that does not sit well with her. And aside from being deeply offensive, that kind of a comment shows how little people understand about fishing communities um, that most of my fishermen are second and third generation, you know, passed out from their fathers and grandfathers, and they're passing down to their sons and daughters. Brandt said the combination of clean energy goals, along with increasing demand, are creating pressure. But that's not an excuse for ignoring people like man. 
we really do need to understand the potential impacts to the fisheries and to other existing ocean users because the ocean is not an empty place. Kale's with me now and super interesting story. The question is, how long is all this going to take? Well, it's a very complicated process and it does not move quickly. I figured it'd probably be a little bit easier to show you than to tell you. So we've got here a timeline from the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management and we're here. This is where they've identified the areas where they want to put these offshore wind farms. From there, there's going to be public leasing notices. That's when the developers can bid on these and eventually they will sell at auction. Then we get into this site assessment and surveys and that can take up to five years. Once those are done, then they will submit their construction and operations plan and then there'll be another two years of environmental and technical reviews and that all needs to happen before they can start construction. So eight to 10 years maybe? Yeah, at a minimum, if things go smoothly, which they rarely do. Yeah, and if there's no lawsuits that hijack or freeze everything. Um, also, how many are gonna be involved and how far offshore? So we know how far offshore they'll be. These areas that they've set out are between 15 and 20 miles off the coast of Brook Brookings and Coos Bay. How many wind turbines there will be, still kind of up to the developer, but likely hundreds. Huh. All right. Interesting. Thanks, Kale Williams, for keeping us updated. You got 10 more years of stories on this. <laughs>